So I'll get started. Um, my name is Eric Hudson from Global Online Academy, and this is a presentation on the Catalyst Conference, which is a project that my organization has put together for the first time. And so why don't we get started? So the Catalyst Conference is an all online student driven conference um, which is actually going to run for the first time on Thursday. Um, this is a project we are piloting this year and the first thing I'll say is the conference is free and open to the public and so I encourage you to go to goaconference.org and sign up and register to be able to see the projects when they go live on Thursday. So I'm going to cover just a few points in this presentation to cover just a couple of key ideas. The first is what is Global Online Academy and what does it have to do with the Catalyst Conference? Um, why did we decide on doing a conference to catalyze change? What are some of the pedagogical and technological concerns that we addressed in designing the conference? And how do you support faculty so they can support students? Um, the last part of the presentation, I will give you a look at a couple of projects which will go live on Thursday, give you a little preview of what's going to happen later this week. So first, a little bit about Global Online Academy. Uh, GOA is a consortium of 65 independent schools from around the world, and we were founded in 2011 with the mission to take what makes independent school education great and transfer that to the online learning environment in a way that leverages global learning skills and online learning skills. So all of our courses are offered as a supplement to our member school's core academic program. Uh, we offer classes that our school students take in addition to core classes on campus. All of our classes are taught by teachers from our member schools, and all of our class rosters are mixtures of students from a variety of different schools. So by design, GOA is a global community of global classes, and we cap our sections at 18 students. So the learning is very much meant to be relationships-based, collaborative, and hands-on. In fact, we've built GOA's program over the last few years around six core competencies. We believe that students really need to master these skills to become successful modern learners. We also believe that the Catalyst Conference is a competency-based conference. In other conference, in other words, students will really be able to show uh, their mastery of these core competencies, collaboration, communication, empathy, uh, leveraging curiosity and transforming it into knowledge, becoming independent learners, using technology to express themselves. We really believe that the Catalyst Conference will help students demonstrate that they've learned these skills over the course of their GOA program. So in designing the Catalyst Conference, we had a few major considerations. Um, this all began really last summer, summer 2015, when two of our instructional designers got together and really liked what GOA had been doing but didn't think we were leveraging our network well enough. So they wanted to come up with an idea that would help classes connect with each other, um, help students visualize this global consortium on a broader way, um, while also serving some really important pedagogical purposes. So they came up with the idea for the Catalyst Conference, and at GOA we really do let pedagogy drive technology. So their major pedagogical concerns around the conference were it needed to be student driven, students needed to be responsible for uh, the topic of their project, as well as for the design of their conference space. Just like at an in-person science fair or in-person student conference where students have a poster or a table, we wanted the online conference to give students a chance to design their own space. Um, so. We also wanted the presentation to be curriculum embedded. It was very important to us that the conference not feel like a one-off. Um, we wanted students' projects to connect directly to core course concepts and activities. GOA is, uh, I see the question in the chat room, GOA is a high school program, so all these students are ninth to 12th grade. It was also important that uh, this program be interdisciplinary. We wanted multiple classes from many different fields. 
we wanted, GOA has this philosophy about global being local. Um, and it was very important to us that we leverage the fact that these students come from lots of different locations. So we asked students to choose an issue that was impacting their local community and investigate that in depth. The idea was that students would choose something personal and close to them, literally close to them, but also um, be able to aggregate these experiences in an online space where all together, all these different experiences would add up to a real global look at lots of different local issues. And lastly, it was decided very early on that we would engage an authentic audience so the conference would be open to the public and free. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with all the different research that shows that when students have an audience bigger than just their teacher or their peers, they tend to be more engaged, do better work, and therefore hopefully learn better. Around technology, um, we made a few key decisions. First, we knew that the conference was going to be online. We're an online school. Um, we knew that it was going to be asynchronous. Uh, it was very important to us that for a pilot, we try to keep this uh, as personalized as possible for students and participants. So you can engage the conference at any time, interact with it at any time. Also, as I'm sure you can imagine, when we're a school that operates in 10 different time zones, um, synchronous communication is more challenging, so we wanted to keep the barrier to entry low. Lastly, it was important that we, or next, it was important that we leverage uh, multimedia capabilities in the online space as well as make it interactive. Every single project has a participatory component. Uh, it needed to be user friendly for students. Students would be doing the bulk of the design work on these pages. And it also needs to be versatile and polished. It needed to look good, basically. Um, that was a big selling point for our students, is that the conference space um, looks pretty polished and looks pretty professional. And we found that to be true in a lot of different ways. So what we ended up going with was a WordPress site. Um, we chose a template for WordPress um, designed for conferences, and then we did some customizations on that template. So we put out this announcement in the summer of 2015 to all the 20 courses we run in our current semester, January to May. We got 10 courses to volunteer. Uh, this brought together about 250 students um, because a lot of these classes are multi-sectioned. So these 250 students represent 60 different schools from 10 diff uh, 60 different schools, and all the schools are in 10 different countries. And so what you see here is these 10 different courses cover a lot of different academic disciplines, a lot of different skill sets, a lot of different interests. And we told the teachers, it's really important to us that you continue to teach what you teach, and you tell your students that they need to choose a project that does advocacy work, but is very clearly linked to core course concepts. And so what we asked students to do was choose a project, choose a topic, and then tag it with one of the three pillars of advocacy. And those three pillars are raising awareness, inspiring grassroots action, or promoting institutional change. And then over the course of the semester, the students were given different tasks in terms of building up their site. As you can imagine, this is a pretty logistically challenging project. Um, so what we did was, while we used WordPress for the front end of the conference, we created a separate space in our learning management system. We use Canvas um, as a back end resource for teachers and students. And that included lots of different resources, including benchmarks for students, which you can see here. This is a snapshot of a longer benchmarks document that really made clear to students what they needed to do and why, and identified areas such as format where they would have some choice in what they would do, and then other areas such as logistics where they would have no choice. There were some real hard deadlines they needed to meet in order to make this work. In addition, it was really important to us that teachers have robust support in managing this kind of network activity. Um, and I would say that's the biggest lesson we've taken away from this, is identifying a leader for a project like this early on and giving that leader a lot of autonomy in helping teachers out. In GOA's case, we had two instructional designers, full-time staff, um, who were uh, working with teachers and designing all the benchmarks, keeping the website up, you know, keeping all those things straight. Um, but they really did a lot of front-end work 
scaffolding the project and planning it out in order to ensure that teachers and students were really focused on the specific content and not spending a lot of time struggling with navigation or technical issues or expectations around calendar. And so, you know, again, I would say front end, polished, sophisticated, back end, using a tool that everyone's familiar with to get all the nitty gritty stuff done. So what I wanted to do was take a brief minute to give you a quick preview of the kinds of projects that are resulting. Again, these aren't published on the conference website yet, um, but they will be. And so I thought I would give you a quick little preview. So um, hopefully you can see this. And if you can't, please let me know in the chat. Um, every student was given a WordPress page and we were given a template, and they were given a template. And so you can see here that uh, this student was taking on uh, self-defense as an issue. And she titled it, everyone should have the right to learn how to protect themselves. She tagged it, promoting institutional change. And every single presentation is tagged with one of those three pillars I talked about earlier. So eventually, you'll be able to filter and sort all the presentations according to the tags. In this specific case, the student wanted to promote change at her school. Um, she attends an independent school in Massachusetts. And as part of Senior Spring Project, the school offers self-defense classes. But the school only offers those self-defense classes to females. Uh, this student is engaged in our gender studies course and wanted to take this on, this issue on, as a way to advocate for her school to change the policy that only females can take these classes. And so part of the benchmark student needed to meet was integration of imagery, background information, um, video resources, um, as well as personalized content. You can see here the student incorporated video of her process and going through this. Um, and also the kind of research that she did in thinking through whether or not this was a good idea for a project. Lastly, every project needed to have a participatory component, and we gave students lots of choice. They could do polls, they could do Skype conferences, uh, they could do surveys or Twitter chats or start a hashtag. In this particular case, the student used Padlet. She embedded a Padlet and asked students to just embed responses on the Padlet after reviewing their pages about you know, what they wanted to do um, about this issue and whether or not they thought the school should advocate for this kind of change. And that's really the template we're asking students to follow. Again, this is just another example. This student in neuropsychology took on the issues of concussions um, and CTE, obviously very very uh, relevant, very current, tagged as raising awareness in the hopes that people will look at this page, go through these resources, look at the infographics she designed, and sort of start getting a feel for why this issue might matter and what they could do at their school. Um, you know, the idea, as Lucy said in the chat, is that we are providing sort of structured choice, um, that we are giving students choice but within very specific parameters um, because we found that when we tended to make this much more open-ended, um, you know, students sort of hung themselves with their own slack, if you can imagine. So when we designed the WordPress site, we specifically chose a template which did not give students choice of font. It did not give students choice around color scheme for the, much, for the most part. So the conference really does have sort of a cohesive aesthetic. But within that, you can see that the student work, there's a lot of variety in the different ways the students approach um, that learning. So um, I'm going to go back to the presentation. So and. You know, what we're really excited to see is um, public engagement with the conference. I think the kids have put in a lot of work. Um, we've done a lot of promotion with our schools and beyond to engage um, how this will work. And Naomi, that's a great question, actually. Um, we let teachers decide. And the majority of the work is independent um, in most of the classes. There are a couple of classes where students are working in small groups of three or four to design a project together. Um, so specifically, in our game theory class, the students did a project where they needed to apply game theory to a current political event or social issue. And the students did that in groups of three. 
So these are students in different locations, so doing a lot of coordination online, and each group then has its own single page in the conference, and so they're bringing in content from different places. But that was very much, uh, we left that choice up to the teachers as to whether or not this would be an individual or a group project. Um, so, you know, where is this going? Uh, again, I said we wanted this to be uh, all online, fully asynchronous, low barrier to entry, and all those things are in place. Um, we have committed to making this uh, at least a three-year project, so we plan on at least two more iterations of this. Um, some of our big priorities moving forward are around partnerships. Uh, we are actively looking for other schools, organizations, or people who would want to partner with us to continue to work on this project, specifically around the idea of things like keynote speakers, um, perhaps having students collaborate with people or organizations um, who might want to help them with their projects, and then obviously looking for as big of an audience as possible for this conference. Around pedagogy, uh, we'd love to push the envelope a little bit around what's possible to help students learn and show their learning better. Um, we would love to introduce uh, synchronous components to the conference, you know, student-led chats or student-led conversations, you know, synchronous keynotes. We would love a, an experiential component. Is there a way to um, bring local um, or other elements to um, kids going out in the world as part of the conference? Exactly, a mentorship network, really, um, really interesting idea. Yeah, Lucy, I posted something on the ISED listserv um, a week ago. I'm planning on doing one more tonight in anticipation of the start on Thursday. But Naomi, I love the idea of a mentorship network, and if you have some recommendations um, of networks, I would love to hear about them. Uh, the last pedagogical piece is something the students have asked for, actually, as a result of this project. They would like to collaborate on projects across courses. So those game theory students who are working on political events, they would love to work with a student from comparative politics um, on issues like this. Students in neuropsychology would love to work with students in organic chemistry um, on issues of drugs. Um, so that's something that came out of student feedback that we'll try to work into this next year. And then the last piece is around technology. Uh, we really like the WordPress site. It's done the job, so to speak. Um, we are, again, sort of investigating, is this the best possible tool for where our ambitions are headed? So that's a super brief synopsis of the Catalyst Conference. Um, again, you know, I really encourage you to just come and join us starting on the 28th. Um, explore the projects. And, you know, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions to me about, you know, how this conference works and uh, what's possible. So thank you for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Naomi, and I'm happy to hang out and chat more if you want to ask questions.